Welcome to the Watchman Channel. This channel is all about world news and Bible prophecy, pointing to the soon return of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I am asking that if you can, to please help to financially support this ministry. If you feel led to pledge any amount of money, it would be extremely helpful and greatly appreciated. There is a PayPal link in the description box and in my pinned comment below. You can also donate using Cash App. My cash tag is dollar sign watchman 1963 thank you all so much for your prayers and support god bless san francisco drag queens mock christians with hunky jesus contest on easter all around the bay area the weather cooperated for easter egg hunts brunches and picnics and that includes an easter celebration that is truly a san francisco tradition ktv's alice word shows us why this year's inclusive easter in the park has even more meaning thousands turned out for the 45th annual Easter in the Park here at Mission Dolores. It's also the 45th anniversary of the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence. In 1979, there were only four. Now, there are thousands around the world. The sisters are a wonderful reflection of our community. So we are the L, the G, the B, the T, the Q, the I, and the A of our community. What a better way to give them vis visibility than to throw some glitter and rhinestones on each other and prance around the park on Easter Sunday. Coincidentally, March 31st is Transgender Day of Visibility. Sisters came from around the world to celebrate in their founding city all enjoying unity in the community. We all come together in the spirit of togetherness and joy to spread that joy and give it to other people. And that just recharges the battery. Since 1979, the Sisters of Perpetual Indulgence have become a San Francisco institution, spreading joy and reflecting the community, supporting many causes. The non-denominational, non-judgmental event offered exciting activities for people of all ages, an Easter egg hunt and games for young kids. This was like really fun thing because it was really crowded at the park and you could also, and I saw lots of friends. There was a contest for Easter bonnets. Later in the day, Hunky Jesus and Foxy Mary contests. Many contestants and plenty of spectators. Easter is a wonderful time for the sisters and for the community. You just see oceans and oceans of smiles. Miles, and I love that. And the fact that it's Trans Awareness Day, it's so important because so many trans people have been so picked on and abused over the years. Easter offered a chance for a coronation of new sisters as well. To our community, to myself, and to my vows. And to my vows. Amen. 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 And all the rest of us. There was a contest for Easter bonnets. Later in the day, Hunky Jesus and Foxy Mary contests. The provincial indulgence. They do this every year. It is such a service to the community. Thank you for everything that you do, sisters. You know, this event every year triggers the right-wing extremists. It triggers them, and you are so beautiful. So let's hear it for triggering the right-wing extremists. Woo! I think I know. Tell everybody what Jesus you are. I'm Jesus Ken! You are enough, baby. You are enough. Can we just appreciate that this Jesus has commandments written on the back? Oh, can you turn around, Ken? Oh, yeah, what's it say? All right, they say, I'm Jesus Ken. Dad wrote commandments, there were 10. Is it my destiny to live and die a life of plastic piety? I am Jesus Ken. I can turn water into wine. I can heal your... I'm so divine. What will it take for you to see the boss behind the cross and cheer for me? Recently, there has been a tremendous increase in mockers and scoffers that are attacking Christianity and the Bible in general. On two occasions, the Bible warns that the closer the coming of the Lord Jesus, the greater the mockers and scoffers will become. 2 Peter 3, 3 and 4 Knowing this first, the scoffers will come in the last days, walking according to their own lusts, and saying, Where is the promise of his coming? For since the fathers fell asleep, all things continue as they were from the beginning of creation. Jude 1, 17 and 18 But you, beloved, Remember the words which were spoken before by the apostles of our Lord Jesus Christ, how they told you that there would be mockers in the last time who would walk according to their own ungodly lusts. What is so significant in both 2 Peter 3 and Jude is, 
The prophets and apostles warned about mockers and scoffers. Apparently, the mockers and scoffers are a sure indicator we are living in the last days. Jesus said, as a sign of his coming and the end of the age, there would be an increase in deception, false Christ who will deceive many, wars and rumors of wars, nation against nation and kingdom against kingdom, famines, pestilences, earthquakes, Christian persecution, apostasy, false prophets, and lawlessness causing the love of many to grow cold. Jesus said all of these signs would come like birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. As we get closer to Jesus' return, all the signs he gave us as a sign of his coming and the end of the age will become more frequent and more intense. All of these signs are manifesting around the world in our time. Isaiah 24, 19 through 21. The earth is violently broken. The earth is split open. The earth is shaken exceedingly. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard. It shall totter like a hut. Its transgression shall be heavy upon it, and it will fall and not rise again. It shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will punish on high the host of exalted ones, and on the earth the kings of the earth. This is the moment the earthquake hit, a magnitude 7.4 according to U.S. estimates. The morning quake rocking city landmarks, Gosh. violently shaking homes. This TV newsroom left swaying as was this rooftop swimming pool. Water falling down another one in this building. The most powerful quake to strike Taiwan in a quarter century. Worst hit the coastal city of Hualien, just 15 miles from the epicenter. Several buildings were left partially crumbled and dangerously teetering. Emergency workers searching for dozens of people trapped in damaged buildings or under debris. Annie Lima, an American living in Taiwan, was in Hualien when it hit. My husband and I jumped to our feet and ran for the nearest doorway and braced ourselves, and we could barely keep our balance, you know, holding both sides of the doorway. And all around us, things were falling off the walls and off shelves, smashing and crashing everywhere. The quake and multiple aftershocks triggered landslides around the island, trapping hikers on trails hitting the capital of Taipei during the morning commute. It set off tsunami warnings in the Philippines and Japan, where thousands were sent racing to higher ground. This is what Jason Delicta is cleaning up in Hualien, where the American owns a restaurant. We lost, like, uh, you know, most of our plates. A part of the world accustomed to earthquakes, but few as fierce as this. The timing, Janice, is just uh, so so difficult right there during rush hour. And as these hours are ticking by, what is the search for survivors looking like right now? Well, crews are working to try to reach people who are trapped on blocked roads and in some cases in tunnels. This afternoon, transport officials said that some major highways are impassable because of debris and fallen rock. Taiwan's fire department has said that several buildings in Hualien have partially collapsed, and landslides along that eastern coast have rendered the one major highway there unusable. And it's why they're warning people to stay put and to not travel, especially in the mountains. This weekend marks a public holiday in Taiwan, as well as here in China, known as Qingming, when families travel to visit tombs and graves to honor relatives. But there have been dozens of aftershocks, and there's now rain in the weather forecast so these damaged roads will just be that much more treacherous to move around. Luke 2111 and there will be great earthquakes in various places and famines and pestilences and there will be fearful sights and great signs from heaven. There are five earthquakes that occur during the seven year tribulation three of which are called great earthquakes. The largest and final earthquake to ever rattle planet earth takes place during the last half of the seven year tribulation as we read in Revelation 16 17 through 20. Then the seventh angel poured out his bowl into the air, and a loud voice came out of the temple of heaven from the throne, saying, It is done. And there were noises and thunderings and lightnings, and there was a great earthquake, such a mighty and great earthquake as had not occurred since men were on the earth. Now the great city was divided into three parts, and the cities of the nations fell, and great Babylon was remembered before God, to give her the cup of the wine of the fierceness of his wrath. Then every island fled away, and the mountains were not found. 
Right now, we're going to begin with the powerful spring storm that is on the move. As we said, at least 48 hours, at least 20 tornadoes, we should say over the last 48 hours, have been reported in nine states. So let's go to Trevor Alt, who is in Prospect, Kentucky, with a glimpse of the damage after a possible tornado. This is one of many homes that are damaged here in the suburbs of Louisville. It's not just the front entryway. I mean, you can see the roof up there ripped clean off in these strong winds. I mean, look at this giant tree in the front yard snapped in half. And these were widespread storms, all those reported tornadoes. And we're talking about hundreds of thousands of people losing power from here in Kentucky all the way down to Georgia. Overnight, a powerful spring storm tearing into the central U.S. In Jeffersonville, Indiana, winds flipping tractor trailers and cars, this semi thrown over a barrier wall. A student at the University of Kentucky knocked off their feet by severe winds of at least 60 miles an hour. The storm's causing massive amounts of damage in just a few seconds. The gust of wind lasted probably 15 seconds through here. I mean, that is the loudest thing I've ever heard. One person capturing video of a tornado forming in Mooresville, Kentucky. The roof from one house went across the street and ended up into another home. Within a matter of what seemed like minutes, uh, it went from about 70, 75 degrees and sunny uh, to suddenly pitch black uh, and debris flying. Dude, that is a tornado. <laughs> this car crushed after a giant billboard came crashing down as the storm tore through Dunbar, West Virginia. It's a tin can. No repair can fix that. It's totally gone. Drone footage capturing the magnitude of the damage they suffered in Williamson County, Illinois. Roofs ripped right off, some buildings gutted, and in Ohio, floodwaters sinking vehicles. Get in the house. See it? Yes, it's right there. Overnight, more dangerous and destructive weather. Tornadoes, high winds, and flooding rains punishing multiple states. Some of the worst damage in Kentucky, where at least three tornadoes touched down, the state's governor declaring a state of emergency. It sounded like a freight train rolling through our building. The storms tearing buildings apart. There's roofs collapsed, there's gas lines spraying gas everywhere. Houses were ripped off their foundations. Intense winds uprooting massive trees, crushing cars, and tearing down power lines. There are two key prophecies concerning Jesus' signs of his coming and the end of the age that are crucial to discerning that we are living in the last days. The first prophecy is found in Matthew 24, 8. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Jesus was likening last day's events to a woman in labor. As the labor progresses, the pains increase in both frequency and intensity until the baby finally comes. This is how end time signs such as wars, famines, pestilences, and earthquakes will occur. They will become more frequent and more intense as we get closer to Jesus' return. The second prophecy is in Luke 21, 28. Now when these things begin to happen, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. Notice Jesus said when these things begin to happen. Jesus was saying that when you see a convergence of Bible prophecy, look up and lift up your heads, because your redemption draws near. We are witnessing not only the convergence of Bible prophecy around the world, we are experiencing the frequency and intensity of these prophetic events as well. Jesus said a sign of his return would be more frequent and more intense weather as we read in Matthew 24, 7 and 8. And there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places. All these are the beginning of birth pains. Pestilence is the Greek word loimus, which means a plague. Definition of a plague is any large-scale calamity, especially when thought to be sent by God. God has used plagues in the form of extreme weather in the past and will again in the future. The seventh plague on Egypt was hail. Don't forget about the famine in Joseph's time. One of the biggest is the flood in the book of Genesis. In the future, during the seven-year tribulation, God will once again use extreme weather in the form of pestilence as judgment. In Revelation 16:21, God uses hailstones weighing 100 pounds each, and great hail from heaven fell upon men, each hailstone about the weight of a talent. Men blasphemed God because of the plague of the hail, since that plague was exceedingly great. In Revelation 16, 8, and 9, God uses scorching heat. Then the fourth angel poured out his bowl on the sun, and power was given to him to scorch men with fire. And men were scorched with great heat, and they blasphemed the name of God who has power over these plagues, and they did not repent and give him glory. So when Jesus Christ warns us that just before his second coming, there will be famines, pestilences, and earthquakes in various places, you had better believe that these occurrences are a sign from God and that he is about to intervene. Earlier this morning, North Korea said that it has successfully tested a new type of solid fuel intermediate range ballistic missile carrying a hypersonic warhead. This comes a day after South Korean military said it detected a ballistic missile fired toward the East Sea. 
North Korea has claimed that on Tuesday it successfully test-fired a new type of solid-fuel hypersonic missile. The regime's state-run media said Wednesday that its leader Kim Jong-un, who oversaw the first test launch of the Hwasong-16 intermediate-range missile the day before, said the regime has now turned all of its missiles into solid fuel, nuclear-capable and with warhead control. The North said Tuesday's test was aimed at verifying the reliability of the weapon system and that it traveled around 1,000 kilometers. This comes a day after the South Korean military said it detected a ballistic missile fired from Pyongyang and that it traveled about 600 kilometers before falling into the East Sea. North Korea vowed to develop hypersonic missiles at the start of 2021 and conducted a first test of the missile in September the same year. Developing hypersonic weapons was one of the regime's five main tasks under a five-year military plan announced at the start of 2021, alongside creating solid-fuel ICBMs and a nuclear submarine. Hypersonic missiles travel at five times the speed of sound, which is more than 6,000 kilometers per hour, so their speed and unpredictable flight paths make them difficult to track and intercept. Last month, the regime claimed the success of a ground test of a solid fuel engine for a new type of intermediate-range hypersonic missile. Intermediate-range missiles are capable of targeting places like Okinawa in Japan, 1,400 kilometers away from Pyongyang, or Guam, which is 3,500 kilometers away. And solid fuel missiles can be launched quickly with little preparation compared to liquid fuel ones. Since North Korea pledged to develop hypersonic missiles in 2021, it has gone through a lot of trial and error. For the first time, North Korea has tested a specific form of hypersonic missile that it's been aiming for. It will likely test fire the missile two to three more times. Experts say the North is likely to start developing hypersonic ICBMs, which are longer-range missiles that are aimed at targeting the U.S. mainland. There is new evidence tonight that Russia may be behind a mysterious traumatic brain condition affecting hundreds of Americans serving abroad. This raises questions about whether the intelligence community is specifically avoiding placing blame on Moscow. Chief National Security Correspondent Jennifer Griffin has an update on the possible origin of Havana syndrome. Essentially, this is an act of war. In an explosive new report, 60 Minutes, The Insider and Der Spiegel found new evidence that hundreds of U.S. government employees complaining of sudden neurological symptoms known as Havana syndrome may have been attacked by Russia with a weapon using directed energy. It was like a high-pitched metallic drilling noise and it knocked me forward. Immediately felt pressure and pressure and pain started coursing from inside my right ear, down my jaw, down my neck, and into my chest. One of the things I started to notice was the caliber of our officer that was being impacted. There was some angle where they had worked against Russia, focused on Russia, and done extremely well. Pull over! Pull over! This car chase near Key West four years ago provided key evidence handwritten notes of bank accounts, a device that can erase the car's computer data and the driver's Russian passport. Receipts link the suspected attackers to a Russian military intelligence hit squad, GRU Unit 29155. Certain Russians were in the exact vicinity of attacks in particular countries. Victims like Adam, who uses an alias and was thought to be patient zero after experiencing crippling auditory sensation that left him unable to walk or move while working undercover in Havana in 2016, responded with relief. They pulled out receipts from the GRU 29155 group, which explicitly outlines that these are weapons systems and a weapons program. For years, he and other victims have felt gaslit by their former agency employers. The intelligence community's broad assessment that a foreign adversary is, is unlikely to be responsible for these incidents. The Pentagon has now confirmed a senior U.S. Defense Department official sought medical treatment for symptoms of Havana syndrome at NATO's Vilnius summit last summer. Hoping to boost conscription and turn the tide of war, Volodymyr Zelensky on Tuesday signed a bill lowering the minimum mobilization age from 27 to 25 as Moscow continued its relentless shelling campaign. On Tuesday, a Russian missile hit the central Ukrainian city of Dnipro, injuring several people. The doors blew up. They were just gone. There was glass everywhere. 
The shelling is constant. The day before yesterday, enemy tanks broke through and fired at us. It was scary. It was early in the morning. A defiant Volodymyr Zelensky vowed a tit-for-tat response, hinting at his country's growing capacity to take the fight to Russia. Rescue operations are currently underway in Dnipro after a Russian missile strike. In particular, a college and a kindergarten have been damaged. It's important that we respond to these Russian acts of terrorism, each time with longer-range responses. Putting words into action, Kyiv on Tuesday carried out its deepest strike yet into Russian territory. Ukrainian drones attacked industrial facilities in the city of Yelabuga in Tatarstan, 1,200 kilometers away from the Ukrainian border. The strike was swiftly condemned by the Kremlin. Ukraine is trying to transfer hostilities to our country's territory, resorting to acts of terrorism, shellings against civilians. Meanwhile, NATO began drawing up plans to secure a five-year military aid package for Ukraine. If approved, it could be worth up to a hundred billion dollars. It seems as though we are on the verge of World War III. Jesus told us in the last days there would be war between the nations. Are we seeing the stage setting taking place to fulfill this prophecy? If so, then we're close to the time Jesus refers to as the worst time in the history of the world as we read in Matthew 24, 21. For then there will be great tribulation, such as has not been since the beginning of the world until this time, no, nor ever shall be. If we are that close to the tribulation, then the world is about to see war the likes of this planet has never seen before. The book of Revelation tells us when Jesus breaks the first seal, the Antichrist will be unleashed. When Jesus breaks the second seal, war will be unleashed. Resulting from these wars will be famine, pestilence, and death as Jesus breaks the third and fourth seals. The Bible tells us 25% of the population of the earth will be killed at this time, as we read in Revelation 6-8. So I looked, and behold, a pale horse, and the name of him who sat on it was Death, and Hades followed with him. And power was given to them over a fourth of the earth, to kill with sword, with hunger, with death, and by the beasts of the earth. The population of the world is roughly 8 billion meaning two billion people will die during this time. The remaining 17 judgments of God include devastating earthquakes, cosmic disturbances, scorching heat, meteors, 100-pound hailstones, volcanic eruptions, loathsome sores on those who take the mark of the beast, the seas, rivers, and springs of water turn to blood, demons torturing mankind, and a 200 million strong demonic army who will kill another third of mankind, bringing the total to four billion. Israel is apologizing for the airstrike that killed seven aid workers yesterday. The IDF says the strike was a mistake that followed a misidentification and it's thoroughly investigating the incident. Meanwhile, Iran continues to threaten retaliation against Israelis for an attack that killed two of its generals. Israel's defense chief warns that anyone who hits Israel will pay a heavy price. Chris Mitchell reports from Jerusalem. This morning, the IDF chief of staff addressed the tragedy that took the lives of a team of international workers from World Central Kitchen as they returned from an aid delivery in Gaza. I want to be very clear. The strike was not carried out with the intention of harming WCK aid workers. This incident was a grave mistake. Israel is at a war with Hamas, not with the people of Gaza. We are sorry for the unintentional harm to the members of WCK. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu personally spoke with some of the leaders of the countries the victims were from. This happens in war. We're checking this thoroughly. We're in touch with the governments and we will do everything for this not to happen again. In the U.S., the White House is expressing outrage over how dangerous it is for aid workers in Gaza. More than 200 aid workers have been killed in this conflict, making it one of the worst for aid workers in recent history. This incident is emblematic of a larger problem and evidence of why distribution of aid in Gaza has been so challenging. Meanwhile, the Israeli military continues to prepare for its controversial invasion of Rafah, Hamas's last stronghold, but also temporary home to more than a million Gazan refugees. Why the Biden administration opposes the invasion, former Vice President Mike Pence says it's a necessity. Israel has no choice but to invade Rafah and hunt down and destroy Hamas once and for all. Rather than criticize Israel, 
Pence said Americans should fully support its war efforts against enemies sworn to wipe it off the map. If the Palestinians laid down their weapons right now and released all hostages, we'd have peace. But if Israelis laid down their weapons, we'd have no Israel. On another front, Israel is bracing for Iran retaliating after a top Iranian general and his aide were killed by a missile strike in Syria that's being blamed on Israelis. But Israeli Defense Minister Yoav Gallant warns whoever hits Israel will pay a heavy price. We operate everywhere, every day, in order to prevent our enemies from gaining strength and in order to make it clear to anyone who acts against us all over the Middle East that the price for action against Israel will be a heavy one. As a sign of his coming and the end of the age, Jesus declares, and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars, see that you are not troubled, for all these things must come to pass. But the end is not yet, for a nation will rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom. The prophets of the Old Testament prophesied of these future military conflicts in Isaiah 17:1, in which Damascus, Syria will be destroyed in a single night. Jeremiah 49, the prophecy of Alam, which could infer an Israeli attack upon Iran's nuclear program. Psalm 83, in which the Muslim nations that border Israel will mount an attack on Israel in order to cut them off from being a nation. Ezekiel 38 and 39, known as the War of Gog and Magog. In this prophecy, a coalition of nations led by Russia, Iran, and Turkey will attack Israel in the last days in order to take Israel's wealth. Luke 12, 54 through 56. Then he also said to the multitudes, Whenever you see a cloud rising out of the west, immediately you say, A shower is coming, and so it is. And when you see the south wind blow, you say, There will be hot weather, and there is. Hypocrites, you can discern the face of the sky and of the earth, but how is it you do not discern this time? Jesus was rebuking the multitudes for not recognizing the times they were living in. Jesus, the promised Messiah, was standing right there before them, and they didn't even know it. If the multitudes of Jesus' day missed Jesus' first coming, how much more important is it for us today to discern the times we live in and make sure we don't miss the signs of his second coming? Are you discerning the times? The signs of Jesus' soon return are so strong now and the evidence is so clear that any person willing to accept the truth can see that the end of the world as we know it is near. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. But God demonstrates his own love toward us, in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Christ Jesus our Lord that if you confess with your mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in your heart that God has raised him from the dead, you will be saved. These are the ABCs of salvation. A. Admit that you're a sinner. B. Believe in your heart that Jesus Christ died for your sins, was buried, and God raised him from the dead. C. Call upon the name of the Lord and you will be saved. Jesus paid the price for mankind's sin. He has provided a way to spend eternity with him and the Father. All you have to do is believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. God has already done all the work. All you must do is receive in faith the salvation God offers. Fully trust in Jesus alone as the payment for your sins. Believe in him and you will not perish. God is offering you salvation as a gift. All you have to do is accept it. Jesus is the only way of salvation. That being said, we must repent of our sins. While repentance is not a work that earns salvation, repentance unto salvation does result in works. It is impossible to truly and fully change your mind without that causing a change in action. In the Bible, repentance results in a change in behavior. Repentance, properly defined, is necessary for salvation. One day, Jesus is coming. You may be at church, you may be at work, you may be asleep. God grant that you will be ready when he makes his personal appearance. My God, what if his appearance occurs on a Sunday morning? My prophetic word to you this morning is get ready, get ready!
time is short. Call upon the name of Jesus today.